As Starship 30 gears up for a crucial static fire test, the fifth flight test is on the horizon. However, potential delays in securing a launch license could impact the timeline. Meanwhile, there's exciting progress on the new Block 2 Starship and preparations for Ship 31. A new booster aft section with critical upgrades has been spotted and a next-gen test tank is ready for structural testing. Let's delve into these latest developments and more. Starship 30 is preparing for the static fire test, the final engine test before launch. Over the past month, extensive heat tile replacement work has been carried out on Ship 30 inside the high bay. Teams removed all the 18,000 heat tiles previously installed on the ship, and a secondary ablative material was added to the ship's stainless steel structure. This was followed by the installation of a white thermal blanket and mesh material, and finally, the new, stronger heat tiles were installed over it. Teams used stronger red and blue colored glues to secure the tiles in areas more prone to failure, and placed KO wool blankets between the edges of the tiles to better fill gaps and avoid vibration and heat penetration. They also reinforced the flap areas and sealed hinge gaps to prevent flap destruction during extreme re-entry conditions. This rapid tile replacement work was prompted by the structural failure experienced by Ship 29 during its re-entry in Flight 4 due to intense heat and stresses. After receiving these crucial upgrades, Ship 30 left the high bay on July 20, moved to Mega Bay 2, and was then hoisted onto the new static fire test stand. The ship was then rolled out to the Massey's site for testing. A Raptor engine was replaced on the ship the past month, necessitating static fire testing to ensure the new engine and its associated systems function correctly. After arriving at Massey's, the ship was moved over the new flame trench, and teams began preparing the vehicle for the static fire test. Meanwhile, Super Heavy Booster 12, which had completed its static fire testing two weeks ago, is currently inside the Mega Bay, undergoing preparations for Flight 5. The next major milestone in the flight campaign is the full-stack wet dress rehearsal, which will be followed by the launch itself. However, SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA. Government Technology, an online news portal, reports that Flight 5 licensing may be delayed considering the fact that SpaceX is seeking a modified license, which includes authorization for the booster catch with the tower arms. The site reports that an FAA spokesperson has confirmed that SpaceX has already requested a modified launch license, but has not provided a timeline for the review process, emphasizing that safety is the primary concern. As per Elon Musk's estimate, SpaceX and the launch vehicle are expected to be ready for launch by the first week of August. We will have to wait and see how long the FAA approval will take. Starship 31, designated for the sixth integrated flight test, is being prepped for static fire testing. Over the past week, all six Raptor engines were delivered to Mega Bay 2 and installed on the ship. The ship was then removed from the engine installation stand and moved into the high bay for further processing ahead of the static fire test. We can expect the ship to roll out to Massey's for static fire testing next month. Ship 31's partner, Booster 13, as well as its successor, Booster 14, are being prepared for their respective flight tests within the Mega Bay. Booster 13 has successfully completed its cryo-proof testing, while Booster 14 is preparing to start its cryo-test campaign. Booster 14's partner, Ship 32, is at the Rocket Garden, waiting for its turn for the pre-flight tests. Beyond Ship 32, we have the new and improved Block 2 Starships. The assembly of the first Block 2 Starship, Ship 33, is underway in the high bay. Two weeks ago, the nose cone and payload bay sections were moved to the high bay and stacked. The payload bay door of the ship was moved into the high bay last week and integrated into the vehicle. Following this, the nose cone payload bay assembly was transferred to Mega Bay 2 for the installation of the Starlink dispenser. The dispenser is responsible for deploying Starlink satellites into orbit one by one. The Starlink deployment door on Ship 33 is positioned higher on the payload bay compared to the Block 1 ships. This design change indicates that the payload bay in Block 2 ships will be extended or stretched. As a result, the deployment mechanism for Starlink satellites will also change, with satellites being released from the bottom up. In the coming days, we anticipate the tank sections of Ship 33 will emerge from the Star Factory and be joined with the already assembled sections, marking the completion of the first ever Block 2 Starship. The Block 2 Starships incorporate significant design changes and system upgrades compared to their Block 1 predecessors. For a detailed look at these upgrades, please check out my previous videos, links are in the description. Booster 15 stacking is also making rapid progress in the Mega Bay. The aft section of the booster was recently moved to the Mega Bay to join the already stacked oxygen tank section. 
The landing tank of Booster 15, responsible for storing propellants needed for the landing burn, has been significantly upgraded from previous versions. It now includes six new external tanks, which resemble the composite overwrapped pressure vessels used on both ships and boosters for various functions. These new tanks are likely designed to store helium gas, which will be utilized to pressurize the landing tanks. This pressurization ensures a continuous flow of propellants into the engine turbopumps, facilitating a successful landing burn. The incorporation of these new pressure vessels is expected to optimize performance and improve propellant management during booster landings. The aft section was joined with the oxygen tank section on Thursday evening. Soon, the stacking of the methane tank will begin, which will be placed atop the oxygen tank to complete the booster. The second launch tower construction is swiftly progressing at the launch site. The fourth section of the tower was rolled out to the launch site on July 22 and was stacked atop the third section on Thursday afternoon. A few hours later, the fifth section was transported to the launch site for stacking. The remaining sections are currently being prepared at the Sanchez site and are expected to be rolled out to the launch site soon. Meanwhile, the tower arm carriage, the final piece of the shipment from Kennedy Space Center, has arrived at Starbase. It is now being prepared at the Sanchez site, alongside the tower arms that were delivered two weeks ago. The only major component yet to be spotted is the Starship Quick Disconnect arm. The Quick Disconnect on Tower 1 experienced damage during previous integrated flight tests, necessitating the replacement of several parts. The damages were caused because the mechanism's retraction speed was insufficient to avoid the booster engine exhaust during liftoff. For Tower 2, SpaceX plans to upgrade the ship quick disconnect to enhance its retraction speed, and it may also feature shielding for protection from a lifting rocket. A Starship test tank, designated Test Tank 16, is currently being prepared for structural testing at the Massey's site. The tank is constructed from a five-ring Starship forward section with stringers and a four-ring aft section. It features an elliptical forward dome with extra welds. The design improvements observed in this tank align with those found on Starship V2 vehicles, suggesting that Test Tank 16 is a Block 2 test article. Test Tank 16 was assembled on July 13 inside Mega Bay 2 and was rolled out to the Massey's site a week later. Upon arrival, it was lifted and positioned inside the new Can Crusher test stand. The Can Crusher test trig is a specialized test stand designed to simulate the forces experienced during a Starship flight on stainless steel test articles. Structural testing of Test Tank 16 commenced on Thursday morning, starting with a cryoproof test, most likely to detect potential leaks in its structure and confirm plumbing reliability. Before the actual crush test, a cap equipped with cables will be installed on the test tank. These cables will be connected to 20 hydraulic rams on the test rig. During the crush test, these rams will compress the tank, simulating the maximum forces expected during an actual flight. Simultaneously, additional hydraulic rams will exert force on the aft section of the tank, replicating the thrust generated by the Raptor engines. The insights gained from the structural testing of Tank 16 are particularly valuable for SpaceX as they refine the design of the Block 2 Starship prototypes. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has been cleared to resume operations by the FAA after being grounded following a mishap on a mission that took place on July 11. During that mission, designated Starlink Group 93, the Falcon 9 upper stage experienced an anomaly caused by a liquid oxygen leakage, leading to an unusual buildup of ice on the engine cover. Consequently, the upper stage engine restart, intended to raise the perigee and circularize the orbit, failed and led to engine destruction. Although the Starlink satellites were successfully deployed, they are now in a high drag region of the upper atmosphere and are projected to re-enter and disintegrate. Following the mishap, the FAA issued a statement indicating that they have initiated an investigation led by SpaceX and Falcon 9 has been grounded. Two weeks later, SpaceX released a statement detailing the findings from their investigation. The company determined that the liquid oxygen leak originated from a crack in a sense line for a pressure sensor within the insulation around the upper stage Merlin engine. This crack, exacerbated by engine vibrations and the loose clamp, led to excessive cooling of engine components, causing a hard start that damaged the hardware. To prevent future incidents, SpaceX has removed the faulty sensor and clamp from the second stage engine. This sensor was not critical to the flight safety system and can be effectively replaced by alternative sensors already present on the engine. SpaceX also reviewed and inspected all sensor lines and clamps across its active Falcon 9 fleet, replacing them where necessary to prevent similar issues in future launches.
SpaceX submitted its mishap report to the FAA following the primary investigation, and on July 25, the agency issued a statement highlighting that the anomaly did not pose any public safety risks and allowed Falcon 9 to return to flight operations while the overall investigation continues. The next Falcon 9 launch, another Starlink mission, is currently scheduled for no earlier than July 26 from Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A. NASA officially announced the cancellation of the Viper Lunar Lander project on July 17, leaving the scientific community in shock. Viper, or the Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, was designed to explore the moon's south pole for water ice and other volatiles, which are crucial for future lunar exploration and potential human colonization. The 430 kg rover, roughly the size of a golf cart, was intended to launch aboard Astrobotics Griffin Lander as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative. Equipped with a drill and three scientific instruments, Viper was planned to operate for about 100 Earth days, conducting extensive surveys of the lunar terrain and collecting data on ice deposits. The primary reason for the mission's cancellation is budgetary constraints and project delays. Announced in 2019 with an initial target landing date of late 2023, the mission was estimated to cost $250 million. However, delays in the lander's development pushed the mission's timeline to 2025. By the time of cancellation, NASA had already invested approximately $450 million in the project, with the projected mission cost escalating to over $609 million. NASA now plans to disassemble Viper and consider repurposing its scientific instruments and components for future lunar missions. This approach aims to preserve the investment already made while redirecting resources toward other projects. Following the cancellation of the Viper mission, NASA has decided to proceed with Griffin Mission 1 as a technology demonstration. Scheduled for launch no earlier than the third quarter of 2025, the Griffin lander will now carry a mass simulator, approximately the same weight as Viper, along with other scientific payloads. The primary goal of the mission will be to demonstrate the lander's capabilities, including its ability to safely land on the lunar surface. This is crucial for building confidence in the lander's ability to handle future missions that may carry scientific payloads or rovers. While the cancellation of Viper is disappointing for many in the scientific community, NASA's commitment to lunar exploration remains strong, with several upcoming missions poised to continue the search for lunar resources. California-based startup, ABL Space Systems, faced another major setback when its second RS-1 rocket was destroyed during pre-flight testing at the Pacific Spaceport Complex in Alaska. On July 19, the rocket was subjected to a static fire test, a standard procedure in which the rocket's engines are ignited while the vehicle remains secured to the launch pad. This test was intended to validate the rocket's engines and systems before launch. However, the test resulted in a fire that compromised the rocket's integrity. While ABL did not provide specific details about the fire's cause, a brief statement on July 22 confirmed that the launch vehicle is no longer viable for its planned mission. This incident is a significant blow to ABL Space Systems, which had been working diligently to prepare for its second flight following the failure of its first launch. The inaugural flight of the RS-1 rocket on January 10 last year ended in disaster just 10 seconds after liftoff, when all nine engines of the first stage shut down due to a fire in the engine bay. This fire was traced back to an overly restrictive launch mount and flame deflector that created plume recirculation, ultimately damaging the rocket's heat shield in the engines. The rocket eventually fell back to the launch pad, resulting in a massive explosion that not only destroyed the rocket, but also caused significant damage to the surrounding infrastructure. Following this failure, ABL Space Systems undertook a comprehensive investigation, implemented several upgrades to the rocket and launch infrastructure, and carried out rigorous testing to prevent similar issues in Flight 2. The static fire test conducted on July 19 was a critical step in this process, but the subsequent fire has now pushed RS-1's second launch attempt further back. The timeline for the next launch remains uncertain, as the investigation into the recent fire continues and further testing will be required before the rocket can take to the skies again. Please check out my previous videos to learn about the RS-1 rocket and its inaugural launch failure in detail. Links are in the description. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.